G'day folks, this is part 2 of the uh, Danfoss Manorop V-Twin Reciprocating Compressor video. Well, the first part anyway. I've had my fun blowing it up. Now it's time to dismantle it and show you just how it works. This is obviously the bottom half. High pressure discharge tube. Three spring mounts. Crankcase heater tube. And your electrical terminals in there. A couple of little magnets in there too for picking up metallic debris. Or magnetic parts anyway. That's the stator, three sets of poles, six poles, three phases. Uh, obviously this one burnt more than the rest. Burnt very well actually. Uh, because the motor's rotor was stationary, it acted like an induction heater. It actually heated the motor stator up. That's not from the burning of the windings, that's heat that was induced in this stator, or the rotor. I noticed that early on, the first time it locked up, I poured coolant down it and it started boiling. Not on the stator itself, but on the rotor. So it acts as an induction heater. It's all free now. It didn't really seize up that bad. That's oil pickup inlet. It uses the centrifugal oil transfer system. Obviously one and two cylinders. Two mufflers. They are hollow with sheet metal baffles and the discharge tubes which go into one common manifold and out to the outside. Don't dismantle it. Okay, well the mufflers are off. Now you can see these passages in here are the suction side, low pressure side, and this reed underneath the discharge valve assembly is the start of the high pressure side. And this aluminum washer simply separates the two when the muffler is clamped on. That's the actual head bearing surface. Uh, this is from the other side. That piston's down the bore a bit. This is your, uh, I think that's the inlet side. Yeah. And that little disc inside there, I don't know if you can see that, that floating spring loaded disc is the high pressure discharge side. So that gets pushed open when the piston comes up on the compression stroke, but it remains shut or is pulled shut when the piston's drawing more gas in through this valve here. It's just a push pull thing. Inlet valve gets drawn open as the piston goes down the bore, gas comes in, the inlet valve is closed or closes itself and held shut by compression, so the gas has no other option but to come out through this one here, out into the muffler and then off to the condensing unit or condensing coil. So this piston is at top dead centre. The bores look fine. The water and other contaminants didn't hurt them, it's just the main motor bearings that failed. Now it's just a close up of one of the valve assemblies. You can see there's a leaf spring in there all the way around and another disc which is the discharge valve. And that's the inlet valve assembly. And that's the main head gasket, I suppose you'd call it. Just aluminium washer. Okay, well that's the bottom end taken care of. The only part that was seizing up in the test was these bottom crank bearings. Conrod journals are fine. You can see where these ones are scoring out. I mean, they're pulling 3,600 RPMs with no lubricant, so they'll be the first to go. Conrod big ends have plenty of play in them and there's no sign of scoring. You can still see the honing on. Yeah, they're still nice and new. The compressor was made in 2001, so it's not new, but 
hasn't done a lot of work. Uh, that one there's scored out. I don't know if you can see that, but that one wouldn't have been helping. Yeah, it looks like she bound up. Okay. A combination of big end bearings and piston bearings and everything going. Well, in order to turn one of these into a small engine, like a few people have suggested now, well, I think the crankshaft would have to be remade and be 180 degrees off rather than both on the same same uh, crank journal. It'd be alright if it was a rotary and you had heaps of pistons on the same journal, but I don't know how that would work as a normal IC engine. make it a flat engine. <laughs> so the block casting, well, I have to bore everything out and put roller bearings in. The bores would handle it though. They're uh, cast iron or steel. Well, there you have it folks, that's one V-twin compressor. Not much else I can really take apart, that's pressed on. And there you go. There's the rest of the bit. Thanks for watching.